What has become really apparent over the last 18 months is that the trips and the promises of the trips have actually not crystallized as hoped and that the promises of the trips have been failed. So I'm and particularly I'm thinking about Article 7 objectives of the trips and Article 8 principles of the trips, which incorporate the principle of development um, as well as the promise of tech transfer. And I think what the debacle of the TRIPS waiver has shown is that it has come to a point where people accept that these principles have actually been ignored at the expense of other principles, such as pet monopolies and other knowledge monopolies. So in a way, the balance that the TRIPS was supposed to achieve um, has not been achieved. Then I think also there is a need for critical and contextual IP scholarship, and I know that one is not exclusive of one another, so there can be a very good technical legal analysis together with a historical, critical and contextual IP scholarship that goes beyond purely is doctrinal analysis. In the current structure of the TRIPS, I think we have to think about who that global public is and who benefits from those particular monopolies. I think what the pandemic has shown is that some publics benefit more than others, um, although the monopoly also benefits more, some more than others. So in a way, the, the, the system is really not um, working in an equitable way. Um, we know that IP law is not just legal, it's also political, but also on the other hand, I think access to health cannot be achieved without some substantial rethinking of the IP law myths and premises. And I think this is something what has become very, very clear over the last 18 months. So that's something um, to be worked on in the future. Mm -hmm.